Hi, good evening once again, friends, and welcome to another live episode of Hashtag SU. My name is Cecil Hinove, and tonight, once again, promises another, wow, fun-filled and um, highly informative evening as we tackle, actually, two segments. We have divided this into two segments for tonight because, one, I will now introduce our guest for this particular segment, is the president of the Philippine Guidance and Counseling Association, and at the same time, my colleague at Silliman University. And the association is going to have a two-day mid-year conference, which will be hosted by Silliman University. Friends, may I introduce to everyone Dr. Evangeline Vanji P. Aguilan. Hello, at Vanji. I'll call you Atevanj sure. because you're a guidance counselor, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, and thank you very much for accommodating our invitation. And I know that you are now in the thick of things, busy with the preparations of this mid-year conference right. of the PGCA or the yes. Philippine Guidance and Counseling Association Incorporated where you have been elected as president, yes, right? right? So maybe you can tell us a bit about what PGCA uh, incorporated uh, is at the bunch and what your objectives are as an organization ah. and other things besides. Okay, uh, the Philippine Guidance and Counseling Association is the accredited professional organization of the PRC. So it's the APO for gu the guidance and counseling profession. And um, uh, principally, it, it exists in order to um, augment uh, counselor, guidance counselors' uh, competencies in the practice of the profession. So everyone who is a member of PGCA is actually an accredited or a licensed guidance counselor. Um, yeah, we are the APO, the accredited professional organization, but we have three kinds of members. Mm -hmm. The first are the regular members who are licensed and registered guidance counselors. The second is the affiliate. Mm -hmm. Those who are in the process of becoming licensed counselors and the third mem kind of member are the junior members um, who are in their uh, graduate, uh, no, bachelor's uh, program and are interested in guidance and counseling work. Okay. So when you are a junior member, you have finished, you have graduated uh, from your bachelor's, bachelor's degree. degree yeah. So you're a bachelor's degree holder, specifically in psychology, of course. Y yes. Definitely, uh, yes. Sometimes in psychology, sometimes in social work or mm. education. Ah, okay. And then they may be working in guidance and counseling centers. Okay, so. ah, that's interesting. Huh? So in other words, this is not only limited to psychology, graduates but even no. social work graduates yes but they also need to still pass the licensure exam yeah for they social have workers. To, they have to finish a master's degree before ah. they can take the board exam also a master's degree is this In, also this is also true to guide uh, I'm sorry to psychologists yes okay right. so first they have to finish a master's, master's degree right and then after that they will take the yeah. licensure exam yes okay but this is only for the licensure exam for psychologists. Uh, okay? Which one? Uh, the, the be, being a licensed psychologist, being a licensed social worker, and at the same time also being a licensed uh, teacher yeah, would, yeah. And would um, le like, um, make you also, oh, no, I'm sorry, would have to uh, let you take the, the gra graduate uh, program yeah, uh, in the case of guidance which, which counseling, one, which one comes first? In other words, um, a bachelor's degree. Okay, yeah, and then if they want to become guidance counselors, they have to take a master's degree in guidance and counseling and ah, take the was, board examination. Okay, that was what I meant. No, so it, the master's degree program comes first, then after that you ought to take the licensure exam. Right. So it's a, usually other professions, in fact, have the licensure exam first. And then later on, if one opts to take a master's degree yeah. or a higher degree for that matter yeah. in the graduate programs, then that is possible. Yes. Yeah. And I think this is only for, for your profession, right, Mam for, Banch? For, for the master's degree. Yeah, for the master's degree. Um, guidance Be and counseling as well as psychology. Yes, before you can take the licensure, licensure exam. exam okay. Right. Now, for the regular members, they have to be both licensed yes and also a master's degree and a license and a license yeah. ah okay and then the affiliate uh, affiliate members are those mm -hmm. who are still in the process yes of, right of uh, taking the licensure finishing a master's degree and, and then take 
the ah, board exam. Okay. So in, in other words, uh, the profession of guidance and counseling has become regulated. Yes. It is not something that is taken for granted anymore because no. after all, you are a frontliner, you deal with people, uh, and in fact, now you have become an association. No? Yes. May um, I ask how many members you have? Do you have the figures? Um, how many members We are there almost 3,000, the licensed counselors, almost 3,000. This is all over the Philippines. All over the country, yes. Okay. Licensed counselors. Licensed, no? so registered. What if, yes, and registered as a matter of fact. What if uh, someone uh, goes into the guidance and counseling profession, if I may call it as such, but has not yet, but is still in the process of um, fulfilling all these requirements, how do you call this person? Um, the DepEd calls them guidance advocates. Ah, guidance advocates. Uh, many schools call them many names, but mm -hmm. the DepEd call them guidance advocates. Okay. And so everybody's starting to call them guidance advocates okay. as well. Oh, or something like guidance in charge? Is oh, that guidance also? personnel ah, okay. or guidance assistants. Okay. Uh -uh. Some would call them guidance angels. <laughs> mm -hmm. Angels. <laughs> yes. Ah, good. Oh, but not a guidance counselor. No. Oh, so that's how the profession is now being regulated. Yes. Huh? Now, you, we mentioned while we were preparing for the program, we me also mentioned psychometricians. Yes. Where do they come in as far as this profession is concerned? Um, psychometricians actually are um, graduates of psychology mm -hmm. who take the board exam to become psychometricians. Okay. Specifically, no? Yeah. Specifically, as a psychometrician. As a psychometrician, okay. yes. So they take the licensure exam specifically for psychometricians. To become like to psychometricians. Become, yes, okay. Yes. But uh, can they also become a guidance counselor later on? If they decide to take a master's degree in ah, guidance and counseling, yes. they also can become psychologists if they also take a master's degree in psychology and again take the board exam as psychologists. As I, yes, oh, oh, that was what uh, I think we failed, we did not mention that yet. No? Mm -hmm. So, an MA in guidance and counseling, if you wish to become a, a guidance counselor. licensed guidance yes. counselor, so you take the licensure exam. And if you wish to become a licensed psychologist, you also need to finish a master's degree oh, in psychology okay. and then take the board exam. Okay, so this is something intrinsic actually in your profession, yes, right? Yes. You have to be a master's degree degree holder first in the profession where you are in, after which you take the licensure exam. Right. Okay. So it is not the other way around. You were mentioning an RA, a Republic yeah. Act. Um, uh, yeah. The, the guidance and counseling profession has been, uh, the, the practice has been regulated through Republic Act 9258. The Act Professionalizing the Practice of Guidance and Counseling. Okay. Is there also a parallel RA for psychology? Yeah. In psychology, it's RA 129. 129. The Act Professionalizing the Practice of Psychology. Okay. So there you are. No? So it's only it's intrinsic in this particular mm -hmm. profession where one should be a master's degree holder first, finish it, of yes. course, no? Uh, in that particular profession or field and then take the licensure exam. Okay? Right. Because other professions, in fact, uh, do, do not have that particular requirement. So yes. this is RA. No? Yes. It's a republic act, so yes. it is uh, provided by law. Now, yes. let's go to your forthcoming um, mid-year conference, Ma'am Vanj. Is this held uh, mid-year? So every year you have a yeah. mid-year conference? Um, what is provided also by law is the guidance month mm. that's in May. So that is our national convention. Okay. And then we have been holding also mid-year conferences to accommodate um, colleagues in the profession who are unable to attend the national convention. Mm. So we hold mid-years, usually in October, um, in different areas in the country. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh -oh. And um, I suppose uh, this is not our first time to host a, a mid-year mid conference. Um, I think the first time for guidance and counseling, ah, first okay. time to hold a mid-year. But yeah. we, we have had activities in the past, like there were several consultations when the law was passed. Mm -mm. There were several consul national consultations. In fact, uh, Philippine Reg Regulatory Board for Guidance and Counseling came over mm -mm. to also support the consultations that were made with regards to 
um, how um, how to start the practice of guidance and counseling as a profession. Okay, you are president of the PGCA, no? yes. and you will be holding uh, this particular term for one year. Yes, but you are also uh, if yes, I, I think you are also um, the o the only licensed something. Um, a, a licensed psychologist or something, yeah. but no, there are there are a number already. There, uh, there yeah, are a number. Actually, I think there is about seventy percent uh, of registered psychologists are also registered counselors. Okay. Uh, in our province, I think I'm the only the one, one with that's two licenses in guidance meaning, and counseling. Yeah, that's that's the one I'm psychology. referring to. So you are the only one in uh, Negros Oriental with two licenses, yes. and these are being a licensed psychologist and a licensed uh, guidance, guidance counselor. Right. The seventy percent registered psychologists you were mentioning, uh, Mamba. Guidance counselors. Ah, sorry, Re registered. Yeah, they are also. Registered psychologists. Okay, and at the same time, registered guidance, guidance counselors. Okay, seventy percent all over the Philippines. Yes, I ah, think they're, they're about. Something. Yes, they're yes. About. Okay, and every year, every year. But the the RA. I'm sorry, the RA was actually uh, passed uh, several years ago. Ha ha RA hundred twenty nine for psychology. Nine. Yes, RA one two nine. Um, I think about three years, yes. three or oh, four years ago. Exactly. Oh, it's mm. not uh, too. Uh, no. Far off, right? No. Uh -oh. So this was about three years ago yes. when the law was passed, yes, no? right. requiring everyone and, and mandating everyone uh, to who are supposed to practice psychology to have a license. How about right. RA nine two five eight? That's for uh, guidance, for guidance and counseling. Not, yes, but this has been enforced in two thousand four, okay. about eleven years ago. Yes, okay. So at least we are able to establish this, no? Yes. Uh, uh, because after all, we are offering um, a psychology program yes. in uh, Siliman University and also guidance yeah. uh, and counseling as a major, right? Uh, uh, in education, a master's degree, uh, uh, and a, a master's, master's program yes. in the College of Education. Yes, that's it. Uh, anchored in the College of Education. Right. Yes, because this is also one way by which we can. Uh, promote our academic <laughs> programs aside from your uh, your mid-year conference so anyway so your mid-year conference uh, this is october uh, it's our first time to host it as yes, you had mentioned right, right. in siliman and in yes. dumaguete for that matter yes. and what is your theme man Ma Ma uh, the theme inform. is yeah. uh, evidence-based mm. counseling mm -hmm. uh, current directions practices and challenges okay maybe we can um, delve a bit on uh, what the directions you are taking now yeah um uh we need to be evidence-based mm -hmm. or data-driven in our practice mm -hmm. in other words uh we just don't create programs mm -hmm. we create programs on the basis of data that we gather from our respective context mm -mm. Mm -mm. and then even if we have data gathered uh for example um, incidents of uh, bullying mm -hmm. in, in the school, okay. um, I must have sufficient data to make me um, conclude that I need to create a program about or oh. uh, against bullying. Okay, okay. And then after that, if I, have a prog if, if I will have created a program on anti-bullying, mm -hmm. I also need to uh, evaluate mm -hmm. if my program is effective at mm -hmm. Um, reducing or eliminating bullying in the school setting. Okay. So it's data-driven or evidence-based. Yeah, yes. Oh, so in other words, I cannot just come up with a guidance and counseling program right. just because I probably heard that there yes. is bullying happening in my yes. school or something right. like that. Right. Okay, but the, is this uh, responsibility anchored only on the guidance counselor or can she ask for some assistance or help from other experts as well? in gathering data and yeah. evidence definitely the work of a guidance counselor is should be collaborative mm -hmm. in nature uh, the guidance counselor would need the help of teachers mm -hmm. parents students and other stakeholders mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to be able to be successful uh, in the implementation of programs okay. and but services. that's only one problem no or concern bullying yeah. there yeah. are other problems of course confronting yes. our schools so that would be one of the items that you will be discussing which in one? the uh, the the evidence based and the data uh, driven yeah. um, all our approach. topics yeah uh -oh. all our topics uh -oh. will be anchored on the theme uh, okay. so we have several workshops actually uh, okay. seven or eight pro mm -mm. Uh, workshops mm -mm. And they are all evidence-based. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we have a 
uh, a topic on organizing and implementing K-12 to mm -hmm. career development. Yeah, this must be evidence-based as yes. well. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. And then implementing anti-bullying program. Yeah, that's the one that I saw. Yeah, yes, based okay. on empirical study. Mm -hmm. And then career development program based on SWOT analysis. Mm -hmm. Evidence-based marital and family counseling mm -hmm. case management. Okay. Uh, healing difficult, ah, sorry, handling difficult clients mm -hmm. based on evidence-based techniques, mm -hmm. and then counselors' wellness through mindfulness and REBT. REBT is an approach to counseling. Okay, what does it stand for, Um REBT, mm -hmm. um, behavior, rational okay. emotive behavior therapy. Okay, rational emotive, no? Yeah, uh -huh. behavior therapy. Yeah. Oh, this is interesting, no? Okay, you'll be tackling this as among the uh, sessions. Yeah, right. And then evidence-based case conceptualization and treatment planning. Mm -hmm. Are, are the, all of these parallel sessions, Ma'am Vanch? Yes. Parallel yes. sessions. So in other words, the participants can cross and, yes. uh, and um, attend anyone among them. Right. A, a mm -hmm. participant can join, can, part, uh, can attend two workshops, one mm -hmm. in the morning ah, and another in the afternoon because okay. the first day is plenary session okay uh -oh. so there so will plen be yeah plenary all of them will be attending yes, the right. sessions okay right. yes and i noticed that you have very interesting topics you also have um, experts of yes. course no who, uh, who you have invited right no? okay. our P our uh, philippine regulatory board for guidance and counseling will be here two of them mm -hmm. the chair unfortunately cannot join us because she's she has a, a trip in Australia, a scheduled okay. trip uh -oh. in Australia. Uh -oh. Who are these, Ma'am um, Honorable um, Carmelita Pabiton and Honorable Elena V. Morada. Okay, it's in your program, right? Right, yes. yes. Okay, yes. And then, um, how many participants are we expecting come um, Thursday and Friday? Today, about 250 have already uh -huh. registered. Ah, great. And okay. we may be expecting on-site registrants yes, as well. So I really good. do not know how many. Yes. And we have <coughs> actually invited the media no? uh, yes. as part of uh, your, your program also, part of the two or three day media conference so that we can, of course, inform everyone no? in Negros Oriental about your organization, PGCA, and uh, what is expected out of the media conference. Because after all, guidance and counseling is something that is uh, embedded especially in our curricula, yes. and uh, as you had mentioned, we will be partnering not only with uh, the, the students themselves, but of course with parents and teachers. So right. the, the press conference is going to be held uh, on at Wednesday, Wednesday at uh, 4.30 in the afternoon uh, at the University House. Yes. And it will be actually attended by uh, the the guests that yes. you have, right? The board of directors. The board of, of PGCA directors. Yes. All of them will be here, Mam Van. Um, one will be unable to come because she just delivered a baby. Ah, okay. And her baby d developed pneumonia. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. But practically all the all of members of the here. board of directors. But it's a good thing that you, as president, is uh, based here yeah, in uh, Dumaguete. Yeah. Actually, the decision to hold the media mm -hmm. workshop in Dumaguete came before I was elected. Ah. I see. Okay, so it was just parang it came like a bonus that you were also elected as president and they had decided to have the <laughs> conference in Dumaguete. I don't know if you'd call it a bonus. <laughs> or it is hard work hard after work, all. No? Yes. Hard work, can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. And then uh, do you accept uh, like um, anyone who would walk in as a participant? Sure. Ah, sure. okay. Is there a fee, Ma'am Vanch, that yeah, they need um, to pay? Unfortunately, if you if you will just have walked in, okay. you will have to pay a thousand more, and that's five thousand ah, five hundred for the two day yep. uh, workshop. But you have early birds, I suppose, no? We have pre registrants mm -mm, okay, and they will pay for five. And actually, we have a promo this year. For every five registrants, one is free. Oh, so meaning yes. if I am with a group of fellow teachers or I'm a, a group of colleagues. Uh, so one of us would we'll be, be free, would free yes. ah, coming from a particular school. Yes, Aye, that's right. great. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Aguilan. You're and uh, Godspeed in your two-day two two day mid-year conference. And I hope we can uh, once again have you perhaps later on as a result na naman of what you had discussed in your mid-year conference. Oh, sure. salama. Thank, thank you very you. much, Ate Banji. Thank you, Dr. So Cecil. with that, we pause for a break and we will move on to our next segment.
Back uh, for our second segment for tonight's episode on hashtag SU. My name is Cecil Hinove once again, and to introduce to all of you our expert in digital teaching applications is another colleague of mine at Silliman University in the person of Dr. Dave Marshall. He is OIC Dean or Acting Dean? OIC Dean. OIC Dean of the College of Computer Studies. And may I congratulate him on air for his uh, newest promotion as Associate Professor. Congratulations, oh. sir. And Thank you, welcome Thank you, to uh, Hashtag SU. Your first time, right? This is my first time. Yes. My pleasure to be here. Good evening to all, the, to all our team. Viewers. Salamat, salamat. But we, we've actually wanted to invite you long ago for your programs at the College of Computer Studies. But nevertheless, this is an opportune time because you have this, this project, or yeah, right? It's a research project under the FERNET. FERNET stands for the maybe, Philippine Higher Education Research Network. Yes, okay. And you have these two. Uh, digital teaching applications. applications, yes, and may I mention what they are, and then you explain them, sir, huh? M, class record, and 
PLMS. MS. Yes. Okay. So, uh, congratulations for this particular endeavor uh, because this is uh, commissioned by Fernet yes. of the Commission on Higher, Higher Education. Education. Yes. So, you launched this only last uh, today. Today. Am I correct? Yes. You launched it this, this morning. morning uh, but this is a result of a. Is it, was it a week-long training that you had also conducted? Yeah, user? we conducted a user, uh, a train the trainers training last week. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the objective is to identify pool of trainers uh, to help us uh, advocate, uh, advocate the use of this digital teaching application. Mm, okay. So um, maybe you can tell us what the M-Class